And now let's get some more discussion. I'm pleased to be joined by Professor Zhang Gong from University of International Business and Economics. Great to have you with us on China 24, Professor. Uh, besides the tech innovation sectors, what do you think are some, some of the other areas that will be heavily affected by this ban? Well, I think uh, the Trump administration, I'm sorry, the Biden administration is pretty much carrying on uh, the Trump administration's uh, strategy of uh, uh, decoupling, starting from the technology area. I think, you know, this uh, <clears throat> event is one more example that the uh, uh, Biden administration is still very much constrained by uh, the uh, political consensus in the United States, uh, as well as in the Congress. Um, and I think uh, some of his uh, executives in the administration are uh, still very much, uh, you know, having the same mindset as the Trump administration. Uh, but I think the United States needs to um, uh, learn from its own history uh, uh, with respect to its relationship with the uh, United Kingdom. At one point in history, the United States was very much subject to the same kind of uh, a, a sort of technology decoupling uh, uh, with uh, uh, UK, imposed by the UK. Uh, but you know, look at the history. Uh, it doesn't prevent the United States from development. I think the, you know, what's happening in China right now is that pretty much all the high-tech companies will be operating under the assumption that uh, the company is coming, that uh, self-reliance, uh, self-indigenous uh, development uh, will be the mainstream thinking in China right now. So uh, eventually, I think uh, what's going to happen in China uh, is going to uh, develop in a direction exactly the opposite of what the uh, U.S. government is hoping for. That is that it's not only not going to slow down China's development, it's actually going to uh, accelerate China's uh, development in technology. It's on the contrary. <clears throat> Now, Professor, China also says it will have countermeasures towards this ban. How will the two countries' financial and economic relations be affected by these moves from both sides? Yeah, you, you mentioned financial uh, decoupling as well. I think uh, you know there are you know a couple of uh, indications that the technology uh, development uh, decoupling, I'm sorry, is inevitably going to uh, faster into other areas, uh, including right now you know, very prominently in the financial sector. Um, that's a, it's a very bad, unfortunate event. But again, as I said, that it's not going to, even in the financial decoupling, it's not going to materially uh, impact China's economy. Uh, if, if we talk about uh, Chinese companies going public in, 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 on, on New York Stock Exchange, for example, um, you know, there are other venues uh, that the Chinese companies who can, can go instead. For example, you know, these companies can be go uh, public uh, in, in Hong Kong, Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So um, there will be have some effect, but uh, uh, it's not going to materially change things uh, over the long run. I think short run, there might be some pain. Uh, but uh, in the long run, I think probably uh, it's even better uh, that uh, uh, you know the entire country, the entire economy is operating under the assumption that uh, you know the United States is not going to be a reliable partner uh, to cooperate with. Uh, that uh, you know self-reliance uh, and indigenous development uh, will be again the, the mainstream thinking moving forward. All right. Thanks so much for insights, Professor Zhang Gung. Always great to ha talk to you.